Welcome to another great day here in Goroka, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. It's a nice foggy morning today, just low lining clouds along the mountains. And we're heading out on a 20 minute flight out to Samogu today. We've got like 900 kgs of cargo pretty much full up and we're going to be doing a couple of helicopter shuttles up to another location that does not have a finished airstrip. They have an airstrip that they're working on. It's not finished though. I'm heading out that way. I'm waiting on the helicopter right now to take our passengers out where they're going and then they can give me a weather report in Samogu. Then I'll get out of here. Well, the helicopter just got here, so let's go ahead and get out of here. What I'm looking at for my weight, my fuel, and everything else, I feel up for 760, which is IFR reserves out there and back, just because it's potentially, as you can see, it's just not that great of weather. I'm not 100% sure what it's going to do coming back. It says it's potentially going to get a little bit cloudier, so I've got the available space, so I fuel for IFR. And I feel just 10 pounds over, about well, 5 pounds over my maximum weight just for my taxi fuel. We've got 933 kgs on board, no seats on board, and just myself. So I put in 1830 into here. Put my weight down. So now I'm five pounds over my maximum gross, which is just basically my taxi weight. We're allowed to do 50 pounds over, but I'm only gonna use up 10. So I'm not gonna do a whole full 50. Grobatow, good morning, November Tango. Echo, request taxi Samogu, one POB. November Tango, Echo, Grobatow. Good morning, Ryan, and taxi 417 left, and the back track lineup, QNH 1018, time check 26. Good morning, Raiden 1018, Could the back track lineup 17 left, November Tango Echo. Before I forget, let's do 75 and 60, whoops, and 63 here for my rotate speed, and just 900,000 on the way out of there. Helicopter. He's just loading up his passengers and cargo now. He's going out to another location that's close by where I'm going, and he's going to be picking up all of my stuff and doing shuttles up to where he's going right now. So this will be like a two-part video. One going out there and unloading, and the second one, him picking up my stuff and me heading back here, and that's all I'm doing today. So I've got a little time, so that's kind of why I wanted to make it into a two-part video. Looking out, I'm heading out that way. I can see, well, I can almost see the ridges. So I know the clouds are below 8,000. I'm going to 9,000. I can see the top of Mount Michael over there, which is at 12,000. So I'm guessing I'll be above the clouds at 9,000. If not, I can go up to 11. But then when we get out where I'm going, I've got a good weather report, so it should clear up by the time I get out there. Look okay, selectors. Controls, our tolls will leave on. Switches and instruments have already got set up. Our flaps are set, indicated, and verified out there. We don't have a radar on this one. I've got my trim set up. If we're not 50 knots by our taxiway, we'll board on the runway after takeoff. We'll pitch for 85 knots, consider EPL. Not consider EPL, we'll introduce EPL. <laughs> we'll consider feather. We'll go cut off, pull off, and shut off. 85 then 84 flaps. Uh, look here's for the best field ahead. Unless I'm really over 1,500 foot AGL, which would be basically about 6,600 feet. I'm full up, so more than likely, now I'll just go straight ahead no matter what, just because I'd have to be at like 2,500 feet, and at that point, I'm not gonna make it back here anyways. All right, ignition, strobes, lights, condition. November take takeoff, ready for departure. 
Over Tango Echo, 17 left left and clear for takeoff. Quick clip takeoff, left turn over Tango Echo. Ignition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses. We're 23 degrees out, so we're going to go 1330 for 1380. is set, air speed's alive, there's 720 in the ATT, we feel heavy today, I am full up. I'm keeping my ATT at 740 just for the climb out initially. I'm just pitching for 85. Looks like we got a couple little low lining clouds right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my turn now. Broke tower, November Tango Echo. Departed time 3 2. Tracking 150. On climb 900,000. Estimating Samogu 5 3. November Tango Echo. Contact must be 120.7. Secondary HF 6622 at 15 miles. 120.7 or 662215. November Tango Echo. For my climb out, I'm wanting 2,000 RPM on my prop and 720 on my ITT. So it looks like there's like kind of what I was thinking. We've got 7,000, probably 500 foot layer right here. So I'm just going to do basically an S turn so where I can get back up over top of this layer at 9,000. And I think, I think that will work for us. Looks like we can just barely creep over top of it. But yeah, just like I was thinking, it's perfectly nice right above this layer, 8,000 feet. Then I think about halfway out there, according to the Windy app, which is what we use for weather here, it was showing that it's gonna probably clear up a little bit. You guys like this style of sunglasses? I've got these on my site as well as like, like the classic aviators. I have these in silver, they're non-polarized, so they're not gonna mess you up with any screens. And then the other ones I have are polarized. I've used them in here and they don't mess up really with the screens unless you're just like looking out like sideways or something, but I can still see all my screens even with those. But if you're interested, um, yeah, I've got them in stock. So I need to head out actually this way. And just looking at kind of where the valleys are, you can't really see it here, but there's a big valley that goes basically on direct track. So I think that's gonna be my best option for where the clouds go. I might actually have to go a little bit higher because that chime was just letting me know I'm just 200 feet before 9,000. And it's gonna be really close. I think once we get a little bit closer, we can tell for sure. I might be able to squeak over top of these. And then on the way back, I'm thinking I might just come back the low route underneath all of this, just for something different. So yeah, if you're interested in that, stay tuned after this video. Cause yeah, it should be interesting. I think it's probably actually cloudier by the time I head back. So we'll see, as long as there's like just a, as long as it's not foggy underneath, we'll do the low route. Bring our power on back to two or 1,250 foot-pound of torque. Get a little bit of right rudder pressure out now that we're leveling off. And yeah, 9,130 feet should just do us fine getting us out there. If you're a flight simmer and you'd like to fly the same route here and follow along with this, check out my Patreon page. I'll leave links um, to a a track that you guys can basically follow along here with the iPad. And I also have a Kodiak course. So if you're just now getting into flight simming and you want to learn how to fly the Kodiak, I also have a link down below. It's a few hour course that just talks about like, for one, everything about the Kodiak that I know that I can fit into this course. As far as like starting, takeoff, landing, the techniques that I use to be able to maintain my airspeed on final, uh, cruise, climb, setting up a lot of engine management stuff as well as a lot of G1000 stuff. So I know that every G1000 on the sim is maybe just a slightly different, but this is just the fundamentals of how to work it, where to start looking for, you know, your tapes and your altitudes and how to set things up as well as some flight plans and stuff. So if you're interested in learning how to fly the Kodiak, check that link out. It's pretty cool. Well, I'll just, I'll just kind of weave back and forth between these clouds. It looks like they're just right at my layer of 9,000. Now I'm just coming up to 6, 15, 16 miles out, so let's call Moresby if we can get a hold of them. Moresby 120.7, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, Moresby, go ahead. 
Good morning, November Tango Echo, 18 miles to the south, Garoka 9000, estimating Somogu 50, copy traffic, Alpha November Juliet. Tango, good morning, traffic. Tango, good morning, traffic. 1008, no, Bermuda, let go. While we're just cruising along here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the strip chart here. Samoku's elevation is 4615, touchdown zone is 4450. Alpha number two, there's more to one, more seven. It's an overall slope of 7.2, but the touchdown zone is just like a 5% slope, so it's not really that much of a slope for landing. Yeah, it looks like it might clear up right after this. Let's just throw my terrain on here. There we go. And it's a left-hand pattern. Nice, easy, last-minute go-around just because the valley opens all the way up to your left. So, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Open right up. And this valley over here is actually the valley that I'm going to want to go down. It's going to clear up. It does look like there's more clouds further on up, but uh, yeah. I guess we'll just play it by ear when we get closer. If I find a way to get down underneath all this, I'm going to take it because if I wait too long, then I'm just going to be stuck on top of it and it's not going to do me any good and then I have to come back and try to find something. So if I find something, we are heading out, let's see, right here. So I'm gonna come down this big valley, come around the hill, and then go in like that. So I only have, oh, how many miles do I have? I've got 22 miles left to go, so not very much further, already halfway there at least. I think my best option is to head over here where this kind of lighter area is. That's where the biggest valley is, and that's going to be my best option for where the clouds are not going to be. And then I'm seeing, actually, further on up, I'm seeing the edge of maybe a hill pass up there. I am full up, like, maximum weight, so I don't, want, I don't have the ability to, like, I don't know, feel like a go-kart and, like, whip around in these clouds and underneath of them all and make a lot of quick turns and climbs and stuff. My climb rate's gonna be pretty pretty slow today, probably like 650, maybe 700 at most. I don't, my margin are, are definitely a lot smaller today just because there is a lot of clouds and I'm very heavy. So those are some things that I have to think of as just autopilot off. Because I'm not really seeing much around this cloud here. I see a little bit of hills over there on that side of the valley. But then I have a lot of clouds right directly in front of me. And then I'm seeing some darker area up there that's just signifying that there's another mountain up that way, which I think is this darker area right here. I'm thinking, actually no, I'm just gonna go with my hunch and just think that the valley's open. I'm gonna head over here, start heading down, and I'm assuming that the valley's gonna open up wide enough for me to be able to get in. I'll start my descent now. Also, we'll get our selectors, turn our taws off, our V-Ref landing speed. We're going to be basically full up, so we're just going to land at 75 knots because it is a 5% slope. Our lights and inlet, we're going to do everything that we can so that when we get down close to the clouds, close to the ground, we don't have to do anything else other than just fly and look out the window. On our board, we're just five minutes out, but on our board, if we have to go around, it's power up 20 degrees of laps, pitch for 73, and a left-hand turn out. Be setting our ITD to 740. Up in harness, we'll get here in a minute. We'll do harness now. These kind of days, I actually really enjoy flying, if you're wondering. If I'm stressed or anything, I actually like when there's like clouds like this, just because it makes it more of a challenge when you go out to the same places like every, like all the time. On great sunny days, it, I wouldn't say it's boring, but it becomes monotonous. But when you have to like get creative and figure out how you're going to get in there and problem solve, I really enjoy this. So the landing was 44.50. So 44.50. So 5,500 is going to be our circuit. I'm going to slow on down just because there's going to be a little more clouds here can't quite see around the next hill. The hill directly in front of me, I need to go around it and then around the next one as well. Okay. So, 
That valley right there is the valley I want to go up, I think. Let's go 10 degrees of left. All right. Got that. I know I'm, the, I'm waiting. Basically, I'm looking to see if I can find the river I'm looking for. Okay, yes. That is the hill going out. I want to go in this one and around that one right there. And we're going to be landing on runway 16. So let's OBS runway 1. Oops, 160. All stations to Mogu. 1. Two zero decimal seven November Tango Echo five miles to the north passing six thousand circuit time Samogu five five zero. Right, I need to go around that hill, not this. You know what I mean? When there's clouds, it really makes what you know look so much different. But the clouds are high enough to where I can get out of here easily, even with a full load of coffee, which I'll be picking up out here today. Morsby 1207, November Tango Echo, in the circuit, Samoga, report after landing. I don't think I could get him on VHF. Morsby 6622, November Tango Echo, in the circuit, Samogu, report after landing. Morsby 6622, November Tango Echo. All right, well, we'll worry about him when we get on the ground. All right, I see the strip is open. That is awesome. Let's go 10 degrees of flaps now. Lots of clouds in the pattern. It looks like it's open enough to get in there. I think there's just a couple right here and then further on back. 48.50 right now, so we're a couple hundred feet below our pattern altitude, but I think I'm just gonna do a revised pattern altitude. Maintain this, turn final. I really wanna be at 5,000, but if I turn at 48, oh yeah, see how it's opening up a lot? I think I'm gonna still remain like 4,900. I normally want to turn right over there at 5,000. It's opening up really well. The helicopter has to head up there. It looks like a little bit of light showers up that way, but not terrible. Looks like I might have potentially a few knot tailwind, maybe up to four knots is what I have showing right now. And I'll just land past, I'll be landing on the first cone in, not the first of the end, because that's the threshold. I don't see anybody on it. Right before I go into this cloud. I'll go 20 degrees of flaps now. Prop and harness is good. Flaps to go. I'm at 75, 85, and 95. So I'm at 95 now. We'll remain 95 until we uh, turn our base. Lots and lots of right rudder pressure for landing. I don't know why this plane needs it, but it does. Going to 85 for base. Ends have dropped off. There's my 85, 4850. So full flaps checklist is complete. 500. Slow into 75. Now it's a headwind. 500. Imagine it'll turn into tailwind here in a minute. Here's my 75. 100 feet on the descent. We're looking for a little bit steeper, so I'm just gonna hold my altitude for a second. Then reestablish my glide slope down. There we go. Now we're at 550. That's looking good. 500. You know, it's a crosswind. Went up on committed. Looks good. We're committed. That's a tailwind. Oh, 
Look at all that mud all over my windshield now. Lovely. <laughs> Stay tuned, I'm gonna go ahead and unload this stuff of these guys, some sports balls, rugby balls, things like that for Christmas out here and as a way to say thank you for maintaining their airstrip and allowing us to use it as well. Wow, it looks like they've got some rain last night, my goodness. There we go. Yeah, I imagine it rained out here all last night as well. But they've got a nice rugby field down there, so I know they'll appreciate the rugby balls. All right, let's shut down and unload all this stuff. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no Thank you. 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 Yes. Thank you. 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 So, okay. so you block and mark him who's up by holding his stuff? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Quick, 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 quick. So you block and mark him who's up by holding him? You block him, yes? You block him, yes? So 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 you block him, I hear the chopper coming, so we've got to get 465 kgs on the first load, 465 on the second load, and then I'm out of here, hopefully, with some coffee. So if you want to see the next part two of this, where we're loading up the helicopter, doing the shuttles up there, dropping it off and getting out of here, and doing the low, right, low route back to Garoka, stay tuned for the next video.